Hey guys, in this video, we're going to talk about how to fund a revocable living trust. Okay, let's get started. All right, so if you don't know what a revocable living trust is, be sure to check out my video on the importance of setting up a living trust because it's a phenomenal estate plan. And I recommend to any real estate investor that they have this type of entity set up for themselves because it's gonna ensure that their estate doesn't go through probate and all of the property and entities that they've set up will seamlessly pass to their beneficiaries in a way in which they've determined and rather than a bunch of attorneys figuring out how it needs to play out. But here's the thing. Setting up a living trust in and of itself is not going to do you any good unless you properly fund it. So what happens many times that I've seen is that people will create these estate planning tools and they never put their assets into it. And they think, well, I'm going to bypass probate. That's one of the main reasons why I set it up. Only for their heirs to find out that because they didn't properly fund the trust, they all have to go through probate. And then it goes into the trust at the very end. So you're really paying twice when you don't need to. So if you've set up a living trust or you are consider setting up a living trust, and this is going to be an important video for you on the funding aspect of your trust. So let's talk about that. So with a living trust, think of it as a big box. All right. This is a, you've seen those videos or those uh, pods that they say, if you're moving, you put your asset into a pod and then you have it shipped down to wherever you're going to be moving to. And you maybe have five or six pods. Uh, in your driveways, you're loading them up with all your furnishings, all your belongings. Well, my living trust here, okay, is essentially a pod. Or think of it as a big box that's designed to hold all your life's acquisitions. Everything you own is going to go into that box. Now, this is where a lot of times people get confused, wondering, what do I need to put in there? Do I need to put in this sport coat into the box? No, you don't have to worry about stuff like that. That automatically happens right? No one's going to want this sport coat anyways when by the time I pass on. Uh, my kids won't be fighting over it, I guarantee you that. But here's what's going to go in there. It's going to be any asset that is a titable asset where your name is designated on that asset to denote ownership, okay? So those are the key things that you have to get in this trust because if you don't, then when you pass on, they're going to have to go through the probate process because that's the only way to change title for the vast majority of assets that remain in your name upon your passing. So that's why it's key. If you've set up a living trust, you have to get this done right away or as soon as possible to make sure that you can avoid probate with this valuable tool. So what's one of the things that we need to transfer in right away? Well, um, if you're not using a personal property trust, like I talked about in my video for protecting uh, personal assets, then you want your, your, all your financial accounts. Uh, that are in your name. Okay, so any financial account that has your name on it as a designated owner. Now, that doesn't mean IRAs or pension plans. Okay, it's where your name appears. You get a statement, it says, states on there, Clint Coons and Tracy Coons. All right, whoa, that's in my name. That's a red flag. That's a problem. It's got to get into your trust name. So then it'll come to the name of your trust. And that'll tell you now the trust owns that asset. Vehicles. Um, you know, would go inside of here as well. Boats, things like that. Now, there are some states you don't really need to do that because when you pass on, uh, you can easily take a death certificate to the DMV and you can have them transferred to the beneficiaries. Also, some states there are some issues with putting vehicles into trust. You'd want to check with a local attorney on that. But vehicles would go into there. Now, um, with the trust, if you have business entities, let's say uh, you've created a corporation you would put your corporation into this box, all right? Maybe you have a Wyoming limited liability company you set up for, um, for anonymity purposes. So I'd put my Wyoming LLC into there. And so when I say put these entities into there, what do I mean? I mean that you're going to transfer your membership interest or you transfer your shares. And it's really simple. All you do is say, in fact, I'm going to put an example right in the show notes. I'm going to have a few for you, forms that you can use. You can download them. And they're just merely assignment forms. I, Clint Coons, hereby assign 100% of my ownership interest in XYZ LLC to my living trust. That's it. Sign it. Notarize it if you want. You're not required to. Put it with your trust documents. Now your entity is owned by there. Now, what happens with that bank account that's in the name of the LLC? Do you need to transfer that over to your trust? 
No, it's in the LLC, right? This LLC is a little box and you put that box into a larger box. And so whatever's in this small box goes with it. So you don't change the accounts. The account in your corporation stays in your corporation name. Now let's assume this LLC owns three limited liability companies that own real estate. Do I need to change those three LLCs over to my trust name? Not at all, because remember, they're going with this one right here. They moved with that blue box. So you're covered by setting it up there. So what you need to look at when you're dealing with business entities, where are you listed as an owner or a member, a shareholder? Well, let's assume that you have an account with Charles Schwab. What do you do with your account with Charles Schwab, your brokerage account, if it's in your name? Do you put it in your trust? No, wrong. You want asset protection for it. So what you need to do is set up a limited liability company for that. Set up a Wyoming LLC for your brokerage account. Hopefully you've already done this. It should hold your savings. Put your brokerage account and your savings account inside of this LLC for asset protection and then put the LLC into there. All right, because we want to stay uh, consistent with how we're doing our structuring to make sure we're protected. What about these uh, IRAs over here and uh, your 401k plans that you have that you've set up and, and you're a member of? Well, those types of entities, if you've set up your trust the right way, you'd want to designate the trust as a beneficiary. And again, you could talk to your financial planner, your CPA, talk to an attorney about how to properly do this so that it doesn't screw anything up. And you want to make sure your trust is drafted the right way so it can hold on to those assets after your passing by having the proper provisions inside of it. So when it comes to funding the trust, the first rule of thumb is go through and find any account annuities and wherever your name appears on entities and get those transferred or changed over to the trust name. Life insurance, another common question we get. What do you do with life insurance? Well, typically it's going to be if you're married, your spouse may be the primary beneficiary. Trust would be the contingent beneficiary on a life insurance policy. So these are all assets that ownership is denoted by your name being associated with them. My sport coat doesn't have my name on the inside, so I don't need to worry about it. It automatically will be passed on to my kids who will then take it to goodwill after my passing. All right, guys, that's how you go about funding a living trust. Take care.